everyone, welcome. My name is Caitlin and I'm live streaming from the Children's Discovery Museum of San Jose. And this segment is called Nature News. Now, the exciting thing about live streaming is that we can show your comments on screen. So if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook right now, if you leave a comment, we can show it on the screen. So if you're watching, please leave a comment with your name and um, where you're writing from. So big exciting stuff from Nature News today. Um, let's jump right in. The first thing we're gonna be talking about is a new straw maze. And this straw maze was created by local artist, Jonathan Pappas. So let's take a look at the straw maze. Awesome. And here to talk about the designing and building of the straw maze is local artist Jonathan Pappas. Hey, Jonathan. Hello. How, how's it going? I'm doing good. Thank you. How are you doing? Good. Good. Awesome. Now, can you tell us a little bit how you started designing the maze? Yeah. Um, this is my very first straw maze, and I've never done this before. One of the, very, the first things that we decided was to make the path four feet wide, so it would be very comfortable. Um, and I began by drawing a few examples uh, just to get a feel as to what the maze would look like, what the level of difficulty would be. Um, and I can show you a few of those examples if you'd like. That would be awesome. So I'll share my screen. And here's a few examples of mazes that I created um, for, for the space. And uh, these mazes don't exactly fit the space, so we went to the museum and I took some measurements. And after that, I created a maze that would fit the space perfectly. And um, here it is. Um, also, um, for this maze, I designed it so that uh, the wood planks that were placed, where the paths were going to be placed, would fit the maze, and the turf tiles that would be placed could also fit. So there's two different sizes going on. Yeah, lots of logistics to keep in mind. Um, what were what do you call your drafts of the the maze that you did? Uh, these are these are sort of like maze tests, and um, but this one is the final draft. And you can see all the where the different hay bales are going to be placed. 154 hay bales. That's a lot. <laughs> all right. Awesome. And then, um, what was the process of building the maze like? So, when we got there, there um, the hay bales were already there, and they were stacked in a huge, huge pile. And each hay bale is about 80 pounds. They're four mm -hmm. feet long, so they're ginormous hay bales. Are super awesome. Um, and it was a lot of fun to build the maze. I created this map to show where the hay bales were supposed to be placed. And um, after figuring out where to place the first one, it was sort of like our cornerstone. It was much easier to uh, build the rest of the hay bales off of that first hay bale. Awesome. And how long did that take? That sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> um, it took about five to six hours. So it was a really oh, fun wow. project. Cool. Awesome. Thank you for building that experience for our visitors. And thank you for tuning in for this interview, Jonathan. Thank you for having me on. Yeah. All right. Bye, Jonathan. 
All right. So as we talked about, Jonathan built a wonderful experience for our visitors. And if you haven't had a chance to check out our straw maze, you definitely should. And if you have had a chance to check out our straw maze, be sure to comment and comment something that you noticed in the straw maze. All right. So we have some more exciting updates with Nature News. The next update is our observation beehive. So we built a new observation beehive in Bill's backyard and we made a short fun video about it. So come watch the video and then stay tuned for some more information about our Diwali festival this weekend. Hi friends, my name is Caitlin and today we're gonna learn what's new in Bill's backyard with Nature News. And one of our exciting things that we have in Bill's backyard is our observation beehive. When you visited the museum before, you might have noticed our other beehive over by Lupe the Mammoth. But we wanted to give our visitors a chance to see what bees look like up close. So we created this observation beehive where you can see bees in their home. There are three types of bees that live in our observation hive. The first is our queen bee, who's gonna be mostly on the inside laying eggs. To protect her, we have the drone bees, which really just take care of the queen and also stay mostly inside the hive. And then all the rest of the bees in the colony are worker bees. And these are the bees you're gonna see the most going from flower to flower to pollinate and also doing work inside our observation hive. The process of moving small yellow grains called pollen from flower to flower is called pollination. To communicate where the best flowers are, bees actually use dancing to communicate. So they go back into the hive, they dance next to their bee friends to give directions to the best flowers, and then the bees go out through our metal tunnel, up through the clear tunnel, and up to our live roof to pollinate our native plants. And so if you haven't had a chance to see our pollinator friends in our observation hive, be sure to come visit us in person. Bill's Backyard is now open to visitors and you can check our website for more details. And don't worry, you don't need a full on beekeeper's outfit to enjoy our observation hive. I'll see you next time for more of what's new in Bill's Backyard with Nature News. Bye. Thank you for watching our Virtual Purple Museum's broadcast. Our fall broadcasts are every Tuesday and Thursday on Facebook and YouTube. Visit us online and in person. Bill's Backyard, the museum's outdoor space, is open every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Stay in the loop by joining our email list. Visit www.cdm.org for more information. All right, awesome. So if you haven't had a chance to check out our new observation hive, definitely come and do that. I know it's one of my favorite parts of the day to come out and see the bees just working, going around the hive, flying around. It's pretty cool. All right, so um, next up, we have some news about our Diwali festival. So if you have, actually, you know what? Before we even do that, I think we have some comments. Um, I see that we have some comments from Kruti Sampara. Hi there. This is Arif. Awesome. Thank you for tuning in. And I think we have one more. Woohoo. Nicole says, woohoo. Can't wait to be back this Saturday. We're so excited to have you back and we're so excited to be reopened again. Thank you for your support during this time. Awesome. Now, as we're wrapping up, we have some information about our Diwali festival that's happening this Sunday. Our Diwali celebration will be running Saturday, November 7th from 10.30 to 12.30 p.m. Now, the 10.30 to 12 will be the program where you can watch dancing and learn about Diwali. And from 12 to 12.30, you can tune in for our virtual dance party. So be sure to register for that. And this event will be sponsored by First Tech Credit, Federal Credit Union. So thank you to First Tech for sponsoring this event. Now, before we close out, I wanted to thank Jonathan again for tuning in. And I think he had some more photos to show us. So I'm gonna bring him in really quick and he can show us some photos of him, of him and his friends building the maze before we close out. 
Hi, Jonathan. <laughs> Looks like I cut you off a little bit early. <laughs> Did you want to show the photos of you and your friends building the maze? Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, Let's add that to the stream. Perfect. Yeah, just another hype up for our fun straw maze. Um, said it took five to six hours to build. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, and uh, I really appreciated being able to serve the museum in this way for the kids. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, Jonathan. All right, and now we're going to be closing out. Thanks to Jonathan for joining us and talking about his creation, and thanks everyone for tuning in with Nature News. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.